Okay guys, in this video uh, I'm going to talk about the push with inverted or normal rubber. Uh, in each case what you're going to see is each video is about five minutes long. Um, for the first minute of each video you'll see me doing a float, then about a minute of a medium push, a minute of a heavy push, and then a minute of a quick off the bounce push finishing with a minute of a actual uh, one of each so a, a float, a medium, a heavy and an off the bounce push uh, just to demonstrate all, all of the techniques so without further ado let's get into the videos uh, starting again with a float uh, things to watch is the, uh, the feet are still moving uh, to keep me balanced uh, you can see how really the elbow during the stroke really doesn't straighten very much at all. There's a lot of the turning coming from the shoulders and really meeting the ball with pretty much the full face of the bat to not try and spin it, uh, just put a, a little bit of spin to very little spin on it. Uh, it's rare to put no spin just because you want a little bit of control but really just, just taking it easy and giving it a basic float um, and the use of the free arm and just a basic standard push stroke now moving into uh, what I would call just a, a medium push the bat now is starting to come a little bit more underneath the ball to uh, get a little bit more spin on it again everything else fairly, fairly similar the wide feet legs a little bit bent, turning the shoulders to help bring the back back and just a little bit of sliding underneath the ball there uh, in terms of opening my bat face a little bit more and coming underneath it just a little bit and, and that's really just my basic uh, I guess bread and butter standard push to control the ball, move it around uh, without taking too many risks in uh, making that play Uh, again, just a good opportunity to uh, compare how the basic stroke is just played to the float and you can see how the bat is much more open and soon we'll be moving to the heavier push which is what you can see now and again, if you have a little bit of a look at this in slow motion it's noticeable how much more open uh, the bat face is really starting to come underneath the bottom of the ball now and uh, getting that way a lot more backspin and in order to stop the ball from popping up in the air I have to make sure I take a, uh, a thinner slice of the ball and skim it a little bit more and that helps to keep the ball low and uh, prevents me from uh, basically popping it up very very high uh, of course this is riskier because you're taking a, a thinner slice of the ball, your contact has to be good um, so it's an aggressive technique designed to hopefully force mistakes from opponents from misreading the amount of spin and uh, again it's a, a little bit riskier and you want to be well balanced and well prepared before doing it. Now moving into the quick, quicker off the bounce push and even though I say off the bounce, what I really mean here is it's taken more or less about net height rather than straight off the bounce when it's too low. Net height works quite well because then the ball is already at the right height to clear the net and you don't have to hit it up and then over. You can just hit it uh, very close to flat. And again, taking a look at my um, the flight of the ball after I hit it, you'll notice that the actual, when I'm doing it well, the flight is fairly flat um, upon leaving the bat and again just using my footwork to keep myself moving and taking the ball about net height and a good little push not so much a, you could call it a jab but it's it doesn't it shouldn't feel jerky it's just a little dab at the ball smooth and in control and now I'm moving to one of each technique and the, so a float Oops, try that again. So, a float, yeah, under, heavy, and short, and a float. 
medium, heavy and off the bounce and just to contrast the different techniques and of course again the difference between say a float and a medium spin is just a small variation in the angle a diff of your bat the difference between a medium spin push and a heavy push again just a small variation of the angle so you don't have to use only three types of pushes a float, a heavy and a medium you can use infinite variations depending on how much you angle your bat and that's what makes it harder for your opponent having lots of variations that look similar have different amount of spin and make things tougher for him alright now we're looking just from the front view again starting with the float and much easier to see from this point of view how I'm really giving it more or less the full face of the bat here I'm not trying to spin the ball excessively uh, very little to a very light backspin uh, playing mainly to deceive my opponent hopefully they'll think there's more backspin than there really is and get them to pop it up uh, another it's a good view to see the use of the free arm the turning of the shoulders keeping myself uh, mobile and moving and again just how the elbow really doesn't straighten out but the stroke uses the elbow to just help swing rather than punch by straightening out the elbow and uh, makes all the difference so a good safe float and now moving into a medium and straight away first thing you can notice is how that bat starts to although it begins in a fairly open position it just slides underneath um, I turn the bat angle just a little bit before contact um, so that I'm coming underneath the ball instead of coming through and important although I do turn my bat a little bit before contact I maintain that bat angle throughout the stroke throughout the stroke other than that it really is designed not to look very much different to my normal push stroke this is I guess more or less my normal stroke it doesn't look all that much different to the float and I would again in a real match be varying from a very light somewhat light a little bit heavier and using all sorts of different spins rather than just one standard um, float ball one standard medium ball so there's lots of variations you can use there and now straight away you can pick up the heavier spin the bat has speeded up, the swing is faster um, I'm really coming towards underneath the ball you can see how uh, tilted back my bat is and really using that forearm and a little bit of wrist to really come underneath the bottom of the ball and slide underneath and skim it and uh, again I can vary this a little bit more a little bit more wrist or a little bit less wrist slightly faster swing or a slightly slower swing will allow me to get some variation rather than always the same amount of heavy backspin much better to have slightly different every time and the more you can make it look like your medium push the tougher it will be on your opponent but the foundation is the same in each case the preparation is more or less the same all that's changing is my bat angle through the stroke and a little bit of the speed of my arm and a little bit of the actual wrist and now moving into the quicker off the bounce push really designed to pressure your opponent give him a little bit less time to react uh, use the speed of the ball against him uh, doesn't have to be uh, it's, it's easier to see from this angle that it's not just a poke but it's just a, a smaller compact stroke not trying to spin it too much and really taking it a little bit earlier around that net height and uh, giving it quite a fair amount of bat face or that that you could change depending on how you like you could give it still a heavy spin but off the bounce that would require better timing but it would be a more aggressive option and again you can just see how I'm I'm trying to move and stay balanced and recover back to my position rather than just staying and leaning and all of that's very important because it helps reinforce uh, good technique 
and now moving to a float the medium push heavy push and off the bounce and again you can really see that although here it, it, it seems fairly obvious which is which during a real match what I'd be attempting to do is blend those techniques so that it's not immediately obvious which one I'm using I'd be varying the speed of the swing I'd be varying the amount of wrist I'm using I'd vary my contact so sometimes I would skim it more and sometimes a little bit less vary the placement of the ball and doing all of these things though even though it's just a basic push still getting lots of variation trying to get my opponent to just put it in the net pop it up a little bit and allow me to counter attack moving now to the backhand push uh, again possible to see here really how I tend to perform my backhand push with the left leg forward rather than uh, stepping forward with the right leg and getting into a traditional backhand stance uh, just like that case there just showing a little demonstration uh, I really do prefer this stance for myself it gives me a faster recovery time when I'm close to the table uh, I really don't need to for these sort of short strokes need to get into a, a real backhand stance with the right hand foot forward and again just a float ball here full face of the bat and not a lot of elbow straightening just a little bit of swing uh, from the elbow swinging around the elbow good use of the free arm just to keep me balanced stepping over and stepping back and just trying to basically move the ball around and now we're heading into just my medium standard push again you can see that how during the stroke my bat now starts to tilt back a little bit more to allow me to generate some backspin a little bit of wrist now comes into the stroke the arm speed picks up a little bit um, that's just my own habit it's not necessary but um, I do tend to increase my arm speed a little bit keeping a good watch on the ball as it comes through and really keeping the stroke very simple just a little swing from the elbow and the wrist rather than a punch from the elbow nothing complicated in the stroke itself and the sort of thing that after many years can do in my sleep basically but that's my standard safety push during matches uh, to keep the ball in play um, when I need some safety and moving now to a, a heavy backspin push uh, this is where I'm getting aggressive I want to force a mistake hopefully from my opponent and uh, get him to drag the ball into the net the bat's now going very very horizontal through the contact I'm trying to spin the ball as much as I can get a very thin slice and skim the ball the wrist is being used more the bat speed is quicker so I'm swinging a little bit faster again and generating a lot more backspin and counteracting again to avoid the ball popping up too high I swing fast and get a very thin slice of the ball if I got too thick a slice of the ball the ball will tend to pop up high but again this is the aggressive option uh, the ball tends to land quite deep and now just moving to the off the bounce quick push designed to move the ball around fast put your opponent under pressure and again a little bit more straightening of the elbow in this particular stroke I tend to use uh, it's not essential uh, it's just the way again I perform the technique so it becomes a little bit of a swing and just a little bit of a perhaps a little bit of a, a punch in there as well uh, you're limited in how fast you can hit the ball uh, by the fact that the ball is not going to drop very quickly on the other side of the net so you can't take a big big punch because the ball would just keep sailing right off the end of the, of the table really uh, and again left foot forward not a lot of shoulder action really not a lot of turning of the shoulders it, it's really not necessary it's all coming from really the uh, 
the elbow and the wrist and we're now moving to one of each so going to the float a medium push the heavy push and the off the bounce push and as I mentioned with the forehand you can blend these techniques to an extent you can take the ball off the bounce while trying to chop it heavier you can take the ball off the bounce while trying to float it you can take the ball a little bit later if you like sometimes to vary the uh, height of the ball vary the timing and of course vary the placement but the basic technique itself with this inverted rubber is that generally the more spin you want the more you come underneath the ball and the more you try and skim the ball uh, the more spin you're trying to generate the riskier it is because the better your contact has to be so uh, again it's a calculated risk when you want to go heavier finishing now with the uh, backhand push uh, from the front on view and again excellent way of seeing just how open how much of the bat face you can see here on the float and keeping the stroke very simple nothing fancy just a little swing from the elbow and uh, not too much wrist there's not really a, a need for adding a lot of wrist if you're not going to spin the ball why add a lot of wrist unless you're trying to be tricky and deceive your opponent uh, again you can see very little shoulder movement just a little bit coming forward with the right shoulder but certainly no rotation of the shoulders as such uh, left leg forward right leg back a little bit and recovering back to my neutral position and just a very safe float ball with very little spin uh, again I'd be using this as an occasional alternative to what is you're seeing here now which is my basic standard push this would be the push I would use most of the time uh, and then I would vary off this for an occasional float an occasional heavier push an occasional off the bounce push so this is my workhorse I guess my main standard push that I'll use and I will vary from this push to try and force mistakes but it's a very safe push there's enough backspin to make my opponent respect it and not attack it easily uh, it's very easy for me to control it's not so heavy that I tend to make mistakes uh, so it's it's safe in that respect whereas when you step up as in this case to the heavier push and start to really chop the ball like you are seeing now this is riskier uh, because of the extra speed of the stroke and the extra spin I'm trying to impart there's more chance that I'm going to put it in the net or off the end of the table however there is also more chance that my opponent might misread the spin so I'm taking a, a calculated risk you can see now really from this point of view how much underneath the ball the bat's going uh, it's also from an opponent's point of view still a very quick stroke it's not easy for the opponent to tell whether I'm pushing with medium spin pushing very heavy or am I actually sort of using a lot of wrist not much wrist so it's designed it works well to be deceptive because you can vary your swing speed vary your wrist vary your contact point and all of these things will affect the amount of spin that you actually put on the ball um, which is going to be from your point of view much more tricky and much more productive than always playing exactly the same stroke and having basically one float stroke one medium stroke one heavy stroke and now just moving to the off the bounce again just trying to take the ball at about net height vary the spin a little bit shift the placement around and make use of that extra pace that you're getting from taking it early put my opponent under a little bit more pressure by reducing his time and really just the pace of the ball is just a little bit faster try and hurry him along and done well can be a very effective technique without having to be too risky
uh, very useful for people who play close to the table. And now, just about to move into uh, a push, a medium, the heavy, and off the bounce. And again, you can just see really the difference in the techniques. A little heavy, heavier, and off the bounce. And the idea being, the more similar you can make it, the tougher it is for your opponent to know exactly what spin is on the ball. If he's not too sure exactly what spin is on the ball, he has to play a little bit safer, which is a good thing for you. Um, so the idea being is, have your basic technique foundation and use small variations of arm speed, wrist speed, uh, contact point on the ball, and all of those will allow you to get variation without having to take big chances. And that increases your percentages uh, and overall improves your table tennis game.